Good morning. Welcome. I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor of Biomedia United Methodist Church, and this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. On this Palm Passion Sunday, as we remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and the journey from there to the cross, we pray with me. Loving God, we thank you for this Sunday. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence, hearing your word read and your word proclaimed, hearing the stories again of your son's entry into Jerusalem and the remainder of his journey to the cross. Be with us now as we worship together in holy fellowship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This morning, our call to worship is from Psalms. It is Psalm 118, verses 14 through 16. That's found in the Old Testament of the Bible, about in the middle of the Bible. And if you'll turn to 118, verses 14 to 16 in Psalm, and follow along, beginning in verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We invite you to share your praise reports and prayer requests with us so that we can pray for the concerns that you have. The more prayers, the better. You can send those to Biomedia United Methodist Church at arunc.org, or you can put them in a comment or send a private message to us on Facebook or YouTube. Will you pray with me? Almighty and loving God, on this Palm Passion Sunday, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made. We remember his entry into Jerusalem. We remember the last leg of his journey to the cross. And we give you thanks for the love so great that you gave him to, to us. You gave him and sent him to earth as a baby in a manger who grew to adulthood and taught us the ways to live in relationship with you. We thank you that he gave his life on the cross for the redemption of our sins. And we're ever more thankful that you raised him on the third day, giving us eternal life with you. Thank you for your unconditional, invitational, transformational love that fills us, helps us grow, helps us to tr be transformed by your transformational love, a love that never ends, a love that loves us no matter who we are, what our circumstances or what we have ever done or what we ever do, you love us still. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence this morning on this special day of the year. We give you thanks for those who continue to step into harm's way, especially the law enforcers and the first responders and the, and the firefighters who stepped in in Atlanta last week and in Boulder this past week as lone shooters took the lives of eight in Atlanta and 10 in Boulder. We pray for the families of those who perished. We pray for the shooters that they will somehow find you and be remorseful and ask for forgiveness. For all the others who stand in harm's way every day, who work in the hospitals, the doctors and the nurses, who still care for everyone who is sick, those with COVID and those with other illnesses, and we give you thanks for their service and their integrity and their tenacity to continue to serve through all of this horrible last year of so many deaths and so many illnesses. We lift up 
the military, the law enforcers, the firefighters, the first responders, and all those who step into way in the aftermath of storms, whether they be floods or tornadoes or hurricanes or wildfires or blizzards. We ask your protection and blessing on them this day and every day. We lift up the prayer concerns to you that we hold in our hearts and the concerns that are on our written list in our church and in our families. And we trust them all to your care now, Lord, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke. We're continuing with this series of our journey to the cross through Lent. Today it is chapter 19, verses 28 through 38. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 38. If you'll follow along, I'm beginning in verse 28. After Jesus had said this, he had been telling uh, a story about a parable of the minas to the, to the people around him. And as Jesus went on ahead going up to Jerusalem, he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say the Lord needs it. Those who were set ahead went and found it, just as he had told them, and as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Who loves a parade? I do. Whether it's New Year's, Eve, New Year's Day, Rose Parade, Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, or any other parades that we see on television or social media, or a local football homecoming parade, an annual Christmas parade in your town, or a rodeo parade. Many of us love a parade. I think that parades bring out the child in each one of us as we watch the marching bands, the decorated beautiful floats, the uh, entertainers, the decorated cars, the prancing horses. We love a parade. We enjoy watching people, especially children, enjoying the parades. But Jesus' entry into Jerusalem stirs a lot of emotions. It did then, and it still does today. And it was a moment filled with possibilities, but it was not a parade like the ones that we see today. The followers of Jesus had had thoughts of what it might be. For instance, was this the king whom they've been waiting to deliver them from the Romans? Or was this the Messiah who came to usher in the blessing of the age and come to return all of the children that had been scattered abroad, the Israelites? The wheel of history was about to turn. Would God establish his kingdom on earth or would the people's hope be shattered forever in the first century entrance processions or parades as we would call them were familiar ceremonies 
Over the years, they announced kings and conquering heroes as they entered Jerusalem. But no one had seen a king like this one, none like Jesus. The Greco-Roman entrance into Jerusalem had some elements in it that were the conquering hero or the king would enter the city escorted by the citizens and or the army of the conqueror. And the procession was accompanied by hymns and applause. And then the Roman triumphant conquerors and rulers, their processions had a little bit different but similar uh, elements in it. They had a symbolic depiction of the authority or the ruler. And the entrance was followed by a ritual of appropriation, which means in those days, such as a sacrifice, where the ruler would make a sacrifice in the temple and appropriate the city symbolically. The kings and conquerors, whether they were Greek or Roman, entered the city on prancing steeds. Yet Jesus entered into Jerusalem. His entry was very different. Jesus rode a donkey, a prophetic sign, a parable in action, and not just any donkey, but a colt that had never been ridden, a baby. Think about it. Jesus in his mother's womb rode a donkey into Bethlehem. And the heavenly host of angels were announcing his birth, shouting glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Luke 2, 14. And now... Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, saluted by the people, shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Luke 19, 38. Jesus did turn everything around. In the beginning, he claimed the prophecy of Isaiah, good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim the freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free, Luke 4, 18. And now he's entering into the city of kings as the king of kings, after filling, fulfilling all these prophecies and more. Through the years, though there have been many scholars and many would-be scholars and others who have asked what-ifs, considered what ifs about Jesus' entry in Jerusalem, such as, what if the people of Jerusalem had have done what they should have? What if God had fulfilled the dreams of those who followed Jesus? But those weren't in God's plan. Those were only what ifs. God's plan was in place. And what transpired after Jesus entered Jerusalem was God's plan. He had already prepared and told the disciples all that was going to happen. But the disciples still on the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem, they still didn't understand. Jesus overturned the tables in the temple and drove out the merchants. He taught in the temple and they questioned his authority to do that. He shared parables and responded to questions about taxes and about the resurrection. And he instructed the disciples to prepare for the Passover meal that they would share as the Last Supper. And Jesus told them that one of, one of them at the table would betray him before morning. Jesus heard the disciples argue about which one of them was the greatest. He had told Peter that Peter would deny him three times before the cock crowed. Peter didn't believe it. But Peter denied him three times before the cock crowed. Jesus prayed for strength and deliverance in the Mount of Olives before he was arrested. That was where he was arrested, where Judas came and betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. He was tried and convicted even though he had never done anything wrong. He was crucified on the cross at Calvary for the redemption of our sins, yours and mine. Think about it. He died on the cross 
and gave us a gift of forgiveness, a gift of love for you and for me. And as we continue our journey to the cross, we can hold fast to Jesus' words. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Psalm 19, verse 10 reminds us with these words. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. It's talking about Jesus' words. But we must return to the word from when we began our journey. The words we heard God speak on the Mount of Transfiguration. A voice from the cloud came and said, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. Luke 9, 35. J.D. Walt said, and I believe it is so true, the direction of our lives will be determined by the depth of our listening to Jesus. Hear that again. The direction of our lives will be determined by the depth of our listening to Jesus. Friends, we need to listen to Jesus today and every day, but more than ever before. As we approach the cross, may your efforts and my efforts to listen to God be more fervent and deeper than ever before. Many people have been saying in social media, in the news and other places in conversation that our world is getting back to normal. And since the shootings last week in Atlanta and the shootings yesterday in Boulder, they're saying, well, we're back to normal. We have mass shootings. Friends, that's not normal. It may have been events that happened prior to COVID, but that doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it normal. We need to listen to Jesus Christ more than ever before, more intently, more fervently, and enrich what we hear from him and hear him at a deeper level than we've ever heard him before. As J.D. Walt said, the directions, of our, the directions of our lives are determined by the depth of how we listen to Jesus. The King of Kings rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, not a steed. He came. He gave his life for the redemption of our sins, yours and mine. We'll celebrate his rising on the third day next Sunday. Between now and then, I pray that you will be listening to him more intently than ever before. Will you pray with me? Loving God, as the cross looms ahead, may we approach with reverence and awe for the gift of your son, Jesus, the gift that he gave us when he died on the cross for our sins. May we listen more intently to you as our relationships with you grow deeper. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus gave his life for your sins. Have you said thank you? Have you thanked him for the gift that he's given to you and to me and to all of us? You can do it now. If you haven't yet, accepted his gift to follow him, his invitation, you can do it now and tell him thank you and say yes. Jesus, I want to follow you. Thank you for redeeming my sins. He's waiting. Receive the benediction. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. We hope that you'll be here on Easter morning at 11 o'clock. And in this holy week on Monday through, fr through Friday, through Saturday, we will have a Hope for Our
hope and prayer for our world at 12 noon each day, Monday through Saturday. They will be about Jesus' journey to the cross and how it brings hope to our world today. I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor of Biomedia United Methodist Church. Until we meet again, may God bless you. Amen.